Howdy, AP Breakout. It's Miss Kosh. I want to make this video um, from, it's sort of sections nine, excuse me, three, nine, and, but also three, ten. So basically, I found a problem sort of similar to this on AP Classroom. And so um, I generated a whole um, activity that, that kind of leads us up to that point. Um, so here are the notes, and then I have some practice for you to do as well. Um, so uh, looking big picture, I give you a regular sine function that's kind of weird, and I ask you to find um, the, the output when I've given you a certain input. So here's two like that. And then I give you an inverse sine function, and then I give you an x and ask you to find um, the, the, the y value, or the, I give you an input and ask for the output. Then we turn it around and say, okay, here's a, a regular sine function, um, not the inverse, which is coming in a minute, but it's a sine function, and now I'm saying, okay, find x when I give you a certain y value, okay? Um, and then, so it's the same idea here, find x when I give you a certain y value, but this one was the regular, tan or regular trig function, and this is a inverse trig function. And I've tried to mix up sine, cosine, and tangent, and all those sorts of things. So that's the big picture for this, um, and I saw something almost identical to one of these two on AP Classroom. Okay, so let's jump right in and do this. Um, I have five sine of five pi times three-fourths plus three, and when I plug, this gives me 15 pi over 4, which is not on the unit circle, but if you think 15 pi over 4, um, if I had 15 pi over 4, I can subtract away 2 pi. That's um, 8 pi over 4, so that gives me 7 pi over 4. So it would be the angle that goes doo -doo 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 and stops here, right? It goes all the way around once and then stops. Um, okay, so sine of that, this is going to be 5 times negative root 2 over 2 plus 3. So negative 5 root 2 over 2 plus 3 is a great answer. Then we can say, okay, what happens when I plug in um, 1 sixth? And this is 5 sine of 5 pi times 1 sixth plus 3. Um, so 5 sine of 5 pi over 6 plus 3. Sine of pi five, 5 pi over 6 is 1 half. This gives me 5 halves plus 6 halves. It gives me ultimately 11 halves. Okay, the other one, the next, um, the next type, so that was just a regular trig function. Now we're looking at an inverse trig function, but doing something similar. Um, and so I have 2 cosine to the negative 1 of 2, pi, 2 root 2 times 1 fourth. I don't know why I wrote it that way, minus pi over 3. Okay, that's ridiculous. This 2 will cancel with a 2, will divide there, and this gives me root 2 over 2. So here we are, 2 cosine to the negative 1 of root 2 over 2 minus pi over 3. Okay, so it's 2 times um, cosine of root 2 over 2 is pi over 4. So this is pi over 2 minus pi over 3. Uh, pi over 2 minus, that's 3 pi over 6 minus 2 pi over 6 gives me pi over 6 as an answer. And I ran out of space. Um, sorry. Okay, the next one I have. 2 inverse cosine of 2 root 2 times um, a negative root 2 over 4. Uh, where were we? Minus pi over 3. Okay? Um, so this root 2 times root 2 gives me a 2 times this 2 is 4, and that's being divided by 4, but it was negative. Okay, that was kind of ridiculous. So this is 2 inverse cosine of negative 1 minus pi over 3. Inverse cosine of negative 1, if I think unit circle, inverse cosine negative 1 is pi. So this is 2 pi minus pi over 3, which gives me 5 pi over 3. Okay. Then the next one, if you notice, these two were the same problem, roughly. Um, I just wanted to ask it two different ways. And to be honest with you, I probably should have put this one first, because finding all, and then we can narrow it down. Like, this gives us the generic situation, and then we can come back and find the smallest. Um, so anyway, I'm just going to work this space, work it over here. So they're saying f of x is 2 tangent of 5 pi root 2x. I did see something kind of ridiculous on AP Classroom, so that's why I was trying to give you something ridiculous to practice. Sine 5 pi over 6 plus 1. Sine of 5 pi over 6 is 1 half times 2 is 1 plus 1 is 2. Um, for the sake of space, I'm just going to do all that in my head 
okay? Um, divide by 2 and I get 1, so now I have tangent of 5 pi root 2 times x is equal to 1. And so we know that tangent equals 1 on our unit circle. It's that slope of 1. That's the pi over 4 family, so it's pi over 4 plus pi k. Okay, and so the find all would mean this 5 pi root 2 times x is going to be equal to pi over 4 plus pi k is the most efficient way to write out our problem. Um, okay, so now I have to get rid of all this mess so that I can solve for x. Um, so I'm just going to multiply by 1 over 5 pi root 2, which is gross, but there we go. If I do that on this side, I have to multiply by the entire side, which is 1 over, what did I just say, 5 pi root 2. Okay, the pi's cancel on both of these terms, which is convenient, um, and I get 1 over 20 root 2 plus 1 over 5 root 2 times that k value, where k is an element of the integers. Um, I think they do want us to um, rationalize our denominator, just in case. Let's practice. I can multiply by root 2 over root 2. I've run out of space. But um, here, x would equal, um, where did it go? Root 2 over 40 plus root 2 over 10 times k, where k is an element of the integers. Whew. Okay, so now, which is the smallest one? Luckily, this was the smallest from before, and so when I do all this operation kind of stuff to it, it this is the, this one right here, so x is equal to root 2 over 40 is the smallest answer. Okay, and the whole point of this was to solve these two, which is what we saw on AP Classroom. Um, not exactly. I wrote my own version similar. But they're saying, okay, when f of x here is equal to the inverse tangent of root 3 over 3 plus pi over 2. Okay, I was trying to be tricky. We'll see if I was succeeded. Okay, so inverse tangent of root 3 over 3, this is the slope, and that slope is less steep than 1. So this is the pi over 6 family. Pi over 6 plus pi over 2 ends up giving me, I'm going to, just for the sake of space, I'm going to write it right here. Um, this is 1 over 6 plus 3 over 6 is 4 over 6, which reduces to 2 pi over 3. Okay, now I can divide away my 2 or multiply by 1 half, and I get cosine to the negative 1 of root 5 times x is equal to pi over 3. And now in order to solve this, I have to take the cosine of both sides, and I get root 5 times x is equal to cosine of pi over 3. Um, pi over 3 is this one. The cosine is the x value. This is 1 half. Divide by root 5. x is equal to 1 over 2 root 5. If they want us to rationalize, which they're likely to do, it becomes a root 5 over 10. Oh, that was kind of gross. Okay, let's see if we have enough space to do the next one. Um, so 2 inverse cosine of root 5 times x equals inverse sine or an arc sine of negative root 3 over 2 plus 2 pi. Okay, um, inverse sine of negative root 3 over 2 has to be in quadrant 4 and it getting there the negative way. So this, we still have this. Let me write this down. Um, this becomes a negative pi over 3 plus 2 pi. And we are at 2 inverse cosine of root 5x is equal to 5 pi over 3. Multiply both sides by 1 half, and I get the inverse cosine of root 5x is equal to 5 pi over 6. Then I take the cosine of both sides, cosine of 5 pi over 6, where is 5 pi over 6? It's over here, cosine is the x. That's a negative, no, hang on. That's a negative root 3 over 2. And now I need to multiply by 1 over root 5. Okay, we can also multiply by um, root 5 over root 5 so that we can rationalize the denominator. And I get oh, a mess. <laughs> um, negative root 15 over 2 times 5 is 10. And there we go. Okay, hopefully that was helpful. Um, I definitely saw something very similar to that on AP Classroom. Good luck. Go practice. Subscribe. We'll see you later.